What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Frankie Hardwork, and I am super duper back. So today I got a couple of stories for y'all today, pretty much. Um, um, I want to talk about your Gotti lawyer. I want to talk about um, your um, young Dolph's wife. Uh, shout out to her. And I also want to talk about Key Glock. But uh, first, I'm going to start off with young uh, with your Gotti lawyer. So lately, it pretty much been things going around stating that uh, your Gotti's lawyer, uh, his name is Arthur Horn. Uh, from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, was supposed to be representing um, Straight Drop, you know, uh, in, the, in the case of Young Dolph. So that been going around pretty heavy, so I guess he's really starting to feel affected by it. So I'm going to read two statements from y'all that he uh, pretty much posted today. He pretty much posted today, so uh, this is from the law offices of Arthur Horn III, and it says, I guess he put this in like a screenshot, and it says, after reading a few recent articles, watching a half dozen blogs, and skimming through the comment section, I've learned sober in fact, misinformation spreads and sells faster than the truth. And there's also another statement where he says, there's also an old quote that goes, quote, a lie will make it halfway around the world before the truth is put shoes on, put its shoes on. Okay, that was the post that he posted that about a couple hours ago. And and LeChat actually, um, LeChat, so LeChat from on 36 Mafia, she actually spoke on it because she followed him as well. And, you know, a lot of people, I guess, feel as though he's a prominent lawyer because she said he's also my my, my family, um, you know, my family attorney as well. And she put up a statement where it says, don't y'all come for him unless y'all need an attorney, LOL. This is the best attorney in Memphis, Tennessee, and I stamped that. She put on chat. That's the chat for 3-6 Mafia because a lot of people is really coming at this dude. I mean, it's crazy how... Like, the internet detectives, man, they, they play no game. Like, you have to be very careful when you associate with somebody. So, he put another statement out. It's pretty much um, the same statement, but it's like a press release statement. I'm going to put it up there for you. I'm going to put everything I'm talking about, I'm going to put it up here for you. I don't see it. So, press release. After reading a few recent articles, receiving numerous phone calls and text messages from friends and colleagues, it has come to my attention that my name and my law firm have been associated with an individual who was recently arrested for the murder of Adolf Thornton Jr., also known as Young Dolph. At this time, I would like to dispel any rumors and slash or misinformation that relates to my representation involving any charge with the murder of Adolf Thornton Jr. At no time I have now, no, no, excuse me, pardon me. At no time have I now or ever retained to represent any of the individual arrested for the murder of young Dolph. So, and when you read these comments, these comments is crazy. Like people, I'm going to put some comments up there, but people's, it's pretty much going berserk. You got people that saying, um, you got some people that's actually for them that saying, you know, people always got something to say to play detective. Lots of, let them in this police do his own work. But then you had somebody put up here, why did you follow, why did you unfollow young Dolph? I mean, not Young Dolph, why did you unfollow Yo Gotti? Then you got somebody else stating, bro, we all know you the lawyer for Yo Gotti and Black Youngster and the whole CMG. You dropping the case so it won't look obvious. It's a bunch of cap, things of that nature. I mean, people are really going in. People are really going in with this particular case because I guess people feel like, you know, they know everything. Like, And that's the thing. I, I want to I speak on it because it is a lot of misinformation going around. It's a lot of cap going around. It really is. And I'm going to say this. A lot of y'all favorite YouTubers, and this is no disrespect to nobody. And this ain't nobody in particular. And if somebody take this as a this or an insult, then I guess I am talking to you. But a lot of these YouTubers don't be knowing what they be talking about. A lot of these YouTubers is just used to sitting behind the screen. You understand? They not they not out here. They don't understand the politics and, and what's going on in the hood and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff that they do. They, they see that they get in a crowd and they just start shooting any damn thing. And, 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 and they feed into people's mind because they know a lot of people, a lot of people want to know about stuff. You understand? So I'm not telling you to stop watching whatever, but you got to take your own stuff and do your own research. You understand? And like with the stuff that I come with, I come with facts. You come to this channel, you're going to get facts from this channel. You're going to get some of my opinion, but I can almost guarantee you my opinion is, 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 is pretty good. I can promise you that. But um, I also want to speak now on um, Young Dolph's wife. So she pretty much was interviewed by uh, AFC, um, ABC. Uh, I said AFC. 
ABC uh, News, and um, I guess in Memphis or whatever. But for the most part, they interviewed. It was a six-minute interview. I'm gonna play some of this clip in a second, but I just want to speak on this part. You know, um, she really wasn't saying much. She really didn't post much since Christmas. You know, she she really fell back, and, and I, you know, and I also just found out that she have a certain program. And I'm gonna play the clip for you in one second, but she have a certain program that she have, you know, for for the irony is is for situations that happen to her. The name of the program is Black Men Deserve to Grow Old. Now that's that's admirable. You understand? Like she was really that aware that of that situation. You know what I mean? Because it happened to her brother. You understand? Her brother got murdered not too long before her husband got. Well, her, you know, her soon to be husband got murdered, and that's crazy. And when I listened to the clip, she basically was saying she was preparing for it. So I'm going to play this clip for y'all real quick. Then I'm going to come back with one more quick story surrounding the situation. And um, I'll be back. And just months before Young Dolph was killed, you started a campaign called Black Men Deserve to Grow Old, which you created it in honor of your brother. Uh, the mission is to support families who have lost their husbands and fathers due to violent crime. Have you been able to find support within the same community that you created in order to help you get through this time? You know, honestly, I have. Um, I give honor to God in this because you know, I had no idea that, you know, me putting this campaign together to help my brother's family and the other families that have been affected by such, you know, uh, violent crime. I didn't know that I was also preparing for my own, like my own journey. And I have received an outpour of support from, you know, fans to different celebrities to I mean, just everyone has been very supportive, sending the kindest note to my team to relate to me, um, just being very supportive. Um, and I just appreciate it so much because it's that, that community support that I know that I need to just keep me uplifted. From your perspective, what can be done in order to stop this cycle of violence, especially in the black community? I think one thing that we really need to, to do more of, I'm not going to say it's not being done, but mental health health in the black community is something that we must address um so many people are walking around traumatized they are have bottled up anger they have bottled up emotion that they have nowhere to to she, they don't have anything to do with it um and they make rash decisions think also you know restoring black family within our community there are a lot of broken homes there are a lot of uh, misconceptions as to the roles that the parents moms and and fathers that they play. And, you know, I think that there is a restoration of black families in the black community. And so, you know, even through Mommy Yo, how, how black men deserve kind of just was birthed, it's through Mommy Yo, the mom and CEO, which is a, a, a brand that I started to help to restore the black family, you know, doing things and, you know, cook meals, come together, pray together, do different things to cultivate family. Mommy CEO. Yeah, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, man. I was, um, so that clip I played for you, man, is you can go check that um, out on ABC, um, on YouTube, ABC News on YouTube. Just Google Young Dog, AC, uh, ABC on YouTube. But that was pretty deep, man. You know, I feel very, very bad for her, as well as other people that lost their significant others, whether it been the wife or the husband, the kids, and anybody, man, that lost anybody, man, right? You know, my condolence to all of y'all, man. But, um, yeah, that was definitely heart-wrenching, man. And she's right, you know? She's right. It, it, it definitely, therapy definitely is a big deal. I, I said that in, in one of my stories. If you go check it out, I got a lot of stories. I got 500 and something videos. I have a bunch of content that you go check out. But um, I said that in a lot of my stories, you know, that, you know, as 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 as, as being black, we don't, we don't embrace, you know, we don't embrace therapy as we should. And I'm going to speak on that. That's a whole nother video. But this last informal thing I wanted to talk about was Key Glock. So Key, Key Glock actually spoke out. He didn't say too much, but he basically posted up a video. And this, to me, this is why I feel like if you if you listen to Key Glock, he don't do no features with no rappers, none. So if you see if you see things on YouTube, he don't do features features with no rappers. He actually take pride in that. He take real pride in not doing features. So this post that he put pretty much put out, it was a post about. It was a post to his cousin, um, Freddie Bankroll. 
I mean, if I'm not saying, I might be saying the wrong, I don't know. But Freddie Brinkman or his cousin or whatever. That's that's Young Dolph's cousin. They're all family. So it was pretty much a post that he put up when when Freddie Bankwell was basically talking about how when he knew a lot of these rappers that, that rock with Young Dolph and that, uh, you seeing them, this and that, this and that. But when he passed, he said a lot of people didn't put up R.I.P. And he was like, that was, that's crazy, you know what I mean? But then he also stated that when Virgil passed, he said when Virgil passed, that Virgil, the whole industry, pretty much R.I.P., R.I.P., R.I.P. And he said half of the people that was saying that, you knew Young Dolph and didn't post nothing about Young Dolph. So he was basically saying, like, you know, people, pretty much it's fake. And that was that was the post that, um, that was the story. It was, a, it, it was an IG story. That was the IG story that um, Young um, Key Glock put up. So I'm thinking to myself, from, from me gathering that, from him putting that post up, he pretty much saying a lot of these rappers out here are fake. And that's why he do not do features. If you listen to his music, he do not do any features. I, I rock with um, Key Glock. I've been rocking with him for a little minute now, before the passing of Young Dolph. He don't do no features. All his albums is just him. The only person he rock with is Young Dolph. And there have been a couple of albums when Young Dolph haven't, wasn't even on the album. So that's how he rock. He really take pride in that. So I'm guessing that he really feeling some type of way. Like, he really feeling some type of way. And that's I guess he's going to continue continue to keep going like this. And he also put up another post, you know, because um, LLD, uh, Long Live Dolph, that album was supposed to drop um, January 21st. I'll put the little post up there. You know what I mean? January 21st is supposed to drop. So, you know, he put that up as well. So, you know, surrounding this whole situation, man, a lot of people hurting off of this, man. They're going to continue to hurt off this. You understand? And I want to say my condolences to the family and the friends of Young Dolph. You know, you know, hit this to his to his family, his future. It was, it was supposed to be his wife. They were supposed to get married. She spoke on that. You go check out the interview. You know, it was just it, that's the thing, man. When people pass, it's, it's a whole family behind them. So you got some people that 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 just want to do stuff for clout and for fifteen minutes of fame, man. When you when you taking away, you taking away generational wealth. That man was building the foundation for his family. You know what I'm saying? And people don't understand that. You 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 just want to get your little clout. You know what I mean? Young boy, I don't know if he did it or not, whatever, but it's, it's pretty much a done deal. He did it. You know what I mean? From, from what they stand, he did it, whatever. But you 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 pretty much, if you just took away generational wealth, man. You just killed the whole situation. I know they're going to go on and on and keep going, but it is what it is, man. Y'all just let me know how y'all feel about this situation, man. It's your boy, Frankie Hard Work. I mean, y'all like, comment, subscribe, and um, let me know how y'all feel, man. Be easy.